All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll just hide the heads. I think I just grouped them on accident there. And we'll create a cube here. For now, we can just do our testing on one, one mesh. We don't have to worry about doing a comparison. That will come a little bit later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the uh, return value from my raw vert. So again, we're going to be basically going over each face in the mesh, selecting each face, and then using the polyinfo command, we will be getting all the verts that are associated with that face. So here is what we get. Now what you can see here is we get the output. This is for each face. So I have a list here, and there's one item in the list, and it is a big, awkward string. There isn't actually much you can do with this directly because like so these are this is kind of what we're looking for here we've got zero uh, one three and two so these are the the verts that are associated with face zero but i can't select this you know number in the middle of a string so i gotta break it up so that's why i used raw verts here so what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a string method called dot split to basically break this string up into smaller strings and we're going to use the empty space as our argument so that basically whenever the script finds a new space in this uh, string it'll just make a new individual string that'll add to a big list so let me just show you kind of what that looks like and i'm going to reuse my raw verts variable here equals raw verts bracket zero. So again, all we're doing here is we're just referring to the first item in our raw verts list. So that's the string dot split. And then my string argument is just this, that's one space right there. So having done that, now I can print raw verts again. And we can take a look at the output now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my, uh, my object and run the code. So basically everywhere that it found a space, it split the string and added the new little chunk to a list. So now what I have is kind of a new problem. I have a list of a bunch of strings and all I really care about is just a few of them that are sprinkled in all of these kind of uh, useless entries here. So there is a uh, another thing that we can do where we're basically, we're gonna use another string method and this one is gonna be called uh, dot is digit. So what we're going to do is make a for loop. We'll say for item in raw verts. If item dot is digit equals true, print item. So what this is doing is for every single item in this list here, we're asking if that particular item happens to be a digit. And if it is, we'll go ahead and print the item. So I will hide my output. So I clear the output, select my item, and run the code again. And we can see it has gone through and basically found all of the, uh, uh, the verts for each face here. Now I don't really want to print them out. I actually need to store them in a list. So I'm going to make an empty list up here above the uh, for item in raw verts loop. And we'll just call it verts and we'll set it equal to just an empty list for now. And rather than printing the item, what I want to do is I want to append it to the verts list. So I can come over here and say verts.append item. So now I have the verts associated with each face stored in a list. And I want to go through each vert and find out what the X, Y, Z position is, and then average them all together. So, and we're going to need to basically redo this for each face. So this is still going to be located here in our for loop that is iterating over faces. So uh, we are going to say uh, for I in range, length of verts. So we don't know if it's four or three or five or whatever. Hopefully it's four, but it could be could be anything really. So we want to make sure that we don't say, for instance, like for I in range four, because that will assume that we have four verts. 
when we may have a different number. And in, in that scenario, we would we'd probably get a, an error. So I'm going to go ahead and select each vert. Write a little comment here. Make sure I don't go off the, uh, the screen. So we'll use our select command again, MC select. And in this case, we're grabbing a vert. So I'll just go here, grab a vert in the, in the workspace and see kind of what the formatting is. So we're gonna have our object name. We're gonna add in dot VTX bracket. And then we are going to grab whatever the uh, ith element, if you will, of our verts list is. And then we will add in, let's see, the, uh, the last little bracket there. And we want to say replace equals true. Now I'm writing out replace. This could just be r. The uh, my doesn't care. But I find that because there, the r command is a little bit confusing for students. They think sometimes perhaps it's like with a sphere, they see R and they don't understand that it doesn't mean replace, it means radius. So rather than uh, try, try to explain that and, and hope there is no confusion, I'm just gonna write, write these kinds of things out. Uh, obviously uh, if with FV here, there, I don't think there is a, a longer version of it. So, uh, but anyway, uh, when possible, I will write out the, uh, the long version of it just for clarity. So we're gonna go ahead and select each vert. And uh, now what I wanna do is get the x, y, z position. So I'll make a variable here called pause and we will set it to uh, the command mc dot point position. And we can just print pause. We'll just make sure that we're kind of getting data that kind of makes sense here. And no errors, certainly it'd be possible to get some errors at this point. Okay, so this kind of makes sense. Each one of these is a list and there's three floats in the list and this represents the X position, the Y position and the Z position of each one of the vertices associated with this geometry. And uh, now what I wanna do is basically average them all together. So the way that we get an average is we add all of the things that we want to be averaged and then we divide them by the number of things that we added together. So I'm going to make some new variables here. I'm gonna make X pause y pause and z pause and set them all equal to zero. And I'm gonna use a little for loop here. Actually, let's see. So what we want are the, uh, the x, y, and z positions to be averaged for all of the verts on the face. So this stuff here, these variables need to exist prior to coming in here and getting our position stuff. So down here, what I wanna do is basically add the current X value for all the verts and then the current Y value for all the verts and the current Z value. So I'm gonna say X pause plus equals pause zero. So again, this is pause zero. This is going to be pause one and pause two. And what I'm doing here with plus equals is I'm just taking whatever the current value is and I'm adding whatever the new value is. So I'll go through all four faces that are, or uh, all four verts that are associated with each of these faces, add all of the X values together for X pause. Now we're going to do this exact same thing here for Y and Z. And we'll uh, shift this to one and this one to two. Uh, and in the next video, we will pick up with uh, averaging these to a, a specific value and then figuring out a way to visualize the output. So stick around for that.